Two teams square off, but only one will move on. It's the destination vacation season of Arena! Welcome to Arena, the show that turns multiplayer games into competitive sports. I'm Lee Raymond, and today we're on that road once again to this year's Tournament of Champions, where our teams will compete for an all-expenses-paid week of fun in the sun. And last time on the show, jumping is useless, prove themselves worthy of the Arena Throne, as they dismantled Team Sick and logged their first win. But today they'll try to make it two in a row. And that's not easy against Team Rednecks, who you'll meet a little bit later. Our squads will go head-to-head -head in Outlaw Volleyball, SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs, and Unreal Tournament 2004. So let's get right to it and go to Kevin, who's sitting with the whole crew in the console pit. Kevin. All right, thanks, Lee. Yes, we're starting things off with Outlaw Volleyball on the Xbox, which is best described as DOA Extreme Beach Volleyball with slightly less skin and more fellas. Players will need to keep an eye on the hot potato meter, which will cause the ball to explode when it fills up. So slip on your knee pads and Outlaw Volleyball. One. And Outlaw Volleyball is underway. Jumping is useless. The red team with Scopatone and Gore playing this first round, Kevin versus the Rednecks as the blue team with I'm Freaking Bad and Inano. An excellent serve, Max Power. And the Rednecks set up the spike, but they just sort of tip it over. And that's a kill for Team Rednecks. And this is a blowout so far, Kevin. Jumping is useless, having their asses handed to them here in Outlaw Volleyball. And a Max Spike. There's another point on the board for jumping is useless. And Rednecks just blowing away jumping is useless. The blue team showing you how it's done here at Outlaw Volleyball. And we finally have a volley on our hand as that hot potato meter fills up. Jumping is useless sends it back over. It's in the Rednecks' possession, but that ball is about to blow, and sure enough, it does. Hot potato strikes, and now team jumping is useless is finally on the board. And a total blowout for the Rednecks. Just handing it to, jumping is useless in round one. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? It's a lie. Two. And round two is underway here in Outlaw Volleyball. The Rednecks in blue, right out of the chute, taking it to jumping is useless, Kevin. We've got Pirate Notrix for jumping is useless up against Master Shake and Gazebo. And the Rednecks, if they take these next couple points, they are going to win the Outlaw Volleyball round. And an excellent volley we have here. Finally, the first one we've seen in this series, Lee. The hot potato meter is adding up, but it does not explode. And if I'm not mistaken, out of the two rounds we've played so far, that is the first points for our Jumping is Useless defending champions. Right you are, Rareman. Let's see if this was just a fluke or if it's going to last. Jumping is Useless, setting the ball over the net. Let's see if they can actually set up a spike. Not on that one. Got another what are you doing? great volley and a good dig by jumping is useless, but his partner proves to be, well, useless. And that's it. Round two, game match set, and Outlaw Volleyball goes to the blue team, the Rednecks. We told you lost. Really? Well, we expected more from our defending champions in Outlaw Volleyball, but Team Rednecks, they didn't even need the third game to take the console point. Now, on the plus side, at least jumping is useless avoided total embarrassment by scoring uh, a whole point in the second game. Now let's check in with Flo, who's standing by with Gazebo from Team Rednecks. All right, I'm standing here with Gazebo, who handled his balls fabulously, I must say. I was watching very closely. What were some of the special moves that you used to win that game? Well, with Scrubby, I used his kick attack, and that's just holding R right. and hitting A when the ball came. Mm -hmm. Makes a big light explosion, and the other team doesn't even try to go for the ball. Cool, the explosions are totally working for me. And now you're going out to SOCOM 2 next, and do you have any special moves that you're gonna pull out there? Well, we're a little worried about SOCOM 2, oh, really? but uh, I think if we just stay in the bushes and make some clear shots, we'll pull up the win. We met you, and now let's check out some of your teammates and your competitors jumping is useless. Oh, we grew up in Lakeside, California. Huh? Second biggest rodeo in the nation. We grew up in kind of a Hickville little city. Only ones that play video games, so uh, we're the Rednecks. That's how it works. My friend Richard, Master Shake, he's a guy who he gets an easy little kill and he will talk to you and brag about it for about 20 minutes straight, make you feel horrible about it. Mark here gets the craziest stuff you ever seen. Turn fire through a wall, hit a guy randomly. I think that's pretty much how he gets all of his kills. He's a good guy. 
And Billy here, he brags about everything and makes a lot of stuff up, but they're all on my team and they're good guys, they're good players. Uh, Cody here, uh, if you play with him for five minutes, you'll throw your keyboard down and never want to play that game with him ever again. He's that kind of player. I, I feel kind of sad for him sometimes. <laughs> and then I'm also jealous at the same time, so I'm sad for myself. But, you know, we're just going to play how we play and we're probably going to win. The last time we were on this show, we uh, were victorious thanks to the work of Gore and Pirate over there, who were our uh, ringers. guardian angels, the ringers, yeah. the ringers. ringers. And yeah. so we're gonna have them talk about that, especially Pirate, because he's very good at talking. Yar. Yeah. Yar. Yeah. Say yar, please. I play with Pirate a lot. Um, I'm aware of his skills and. Uh... <laughs> Shut the f <laughs> <laughs> We killed the blue thing, so that was the trick. Was we made sure to kill everything that was blue and not kill things that were red. That's really what I did, and I had two points. There are there is gonna be a substitute in the team um, if he doesn't start pulling his weight. Because I really want that trip. And I want to No win. dude! <laughs> I need you guys! I look forward to our competition. Yeah. But know that you are nothing more than a dormant corpse that is ready to be gibbed. Ooh. Dark. <laughs> Yar. Klein. Klein. That's it. Look. Well, I guess we should welcome Team Rednecks to the big city. Welcome, boys. Now, they may not be in the rodeo, but volleyball just might be their game. Anyway, it looks like jumping is useless, maybe suffering from the old sophomore jinx, as they are completely dominated in their first title defense by the newcomers of Team Rednecks. But we've got a long way to go, people, and both teams will have a chance to go to battle in SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs, and a little later, they'll lock and load with Unreal Tournament 2004. It's all coming up as we move closer to destination vacation right here on Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Now, before the break, Team Rednecks came in and showed jumping his useless little respect with a pounding in outlaw volleyball. But now it's time to get out of the bikinis, darn it, and into the military fatigues as we're about to head into the tactical squad-based action of SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs presented by the U.S. Navy. Let's go to Kevin in the PS2 Control Center and get it started. Kevin. Thank you, Lee. Yes, SOCOM 2 is a squad-based shooter that puts our teams right into the middle of a deadly military conflict. Now, a coin flip before the show determined that Team Rednecks will be the SEALs, and jumping is useless will be the opposing force. Now, the mode is suppression, which in non-military terms means Team Deathmatch. Now, today's map is Chain Reaction, which is set in a submarine docking bay. Now, let's get to the action and see what happens in SOCOM 2, U.S. Navy SEALs. And so come two U.S. Navy SEALs is underway, Kevin, with the SEALs, the Rednecks, versus the opposition. Jumping is useless. I'm Freaking Bad makes his way inside the facility. There's three members of his team, and they all stand around staring at Autrix for a little while. Uh, he's not as flamboyant in the game, but I'm not quite sure why they were mesmerized by him, but they finally took him down. Anything? Master Shake takes down Autrix. Pirate retaliates, takes down Inano, and I'm freaking bad, takes out Scopatone. And I'm freaking bad, spots an enemy across the way, and he's just trying to get a beat on him. He does not have a sniper rifle in his hands, though. Nice. But it doesn't matter. With some well-placed burst fire, he takes down Pirate, and I'm freaking bad. He's on a killing spree, Lee. And Autrix has been spotted, but I don't know if he knows that as he makes his way up top. Spots a friendly down below and backtracks his way down. You guys are scattered. Is anyone engaging them? Sometimes those higher positions work both ways. You have a great sniper position, but you're also a sitting duck if you're out in the open. Scopatone. Making his way up that ladder. Up top. A tough place to be if somebody and picks him. And there, as, as I indicated, I even, have, I even call one out once in a while, Kevin. No one believes you, Lee. It's all in the editing. Autrix takes down Inano with that STG-77. Watch out for the single polygon slowly making its way through the factory. That looked like a door for Monsters, Inc. Light it down, Kill. Yeah. Light it down. Master Shake goes prone. Trying to avoid some fire. And time takes down as Pirate sneaks in one more shot. And that'll do it for round one, Lee. And the Rednecks, as the Seals, continue where they left off in Outlaw Volleyball, Kevin. They take round one of SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy Seals. I wonder what happened to Avenging. I find someone at Avenging. Two. And round two underway, Kevin, here in 
SOCOM 2, U.S. Navy SEALs. Once again, the Redneck says the SEALs haven't taken round one. Scopatone. Take it up where he left off last time, moving around those catwalks, and he goes down. Gazebo takes down Scopatone and Autrix in one fell swoop of that M4A1. We should get over those guys. And Pirate retaliates a little vengeance, takes down Gazebo. Gazebo down. And Autrix goes down. Pirate, they're right there. Pirate takes down, I'm freaking bad, but now he's got another thing to worry about, and that's Gazebo with an M4A1. Takes him down, but Scopatone's there. Makes short order of Gazebo. Autrix takes down Master Shake, prone and up close. Was he laying down? Yeah. <laughs> and Gazebo's in a firefight. It's close. He's trying to round about his enemy. And that was Scopatone, who gets taken out by Gazebo. And it looks like Inano. A little double team action, Lee. Oh, and Master Shake just tore up Autrix, who was in the prone position. I saw some guys. They're right in front of me. Master Shake on the catwalk there. Firefight breaks out. He switches to pistol. Does not have time to reload. Oh, Rich, two up here. Gore oh. takes out Gazebo and then takes out Master Shake as well. Pistol versus automatic rifle. Guess who wins there, Lee? Nice. I got small. Yeah. Scopatone down below. Spots an enemy up top in the crouch position. Excellent work by Scopatone. Four kills, two deaths. He's doing well here in round two. I'm freaking bad. Zero's in for one more kill here as the time ticks away and Master Shake steals it. Master Shake takes down Gore. All right, Kevin, round three. We'll determine our winner here in SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs. The first round having gone to the Rednecks. The second round having been tied. Yeah, you know, I think we should have a party where we play this game live or something. Yeah, I like it. Some inch TV. I kind of like it. Three. And it's underway. Once again, the Rednecks is the SEALs. Jumping is useless as the opposing force. Pirate takes down Inano. Pirate fell to his death there. He forgot to attach the bungee cord. <laughs> <laughs> Inano taking some damage in a firefight, but he was Ooh. shooting at his own toes, and he paid for it there as Autrix made short work of him. Oh, dude, I totally got him. That was a submachine gun, too. Pirate goes down in a heap of glory. And this round is all about the twitch factor, Lee. Shots ring out. You've got to be able to get a bead on your enemy right away. Master's shaking that prone position. See him down there still? No, I can't see him. See that coming across. And I'm freaking bad. Spots an enemy across the way, and he tries Ooh. to make his way over to him, but a headshot from Gore sends him down. Excellently placed shot. And Master Shake is prone, taking pot shots at the enemy, but he has to pause to reload, and that could cost him here. He's taking serious damage. He's very low on health as he gets taken down by Pirate, unable to get a beat on his enemy. Gazebo prone up on that catwalk there, unloading on a member of Team Jumping is useless, but so far unable to take him out. And finally, Gazebo takes him down. Pirate is eliminated. What? I don't understand what should be for He's stopping. And Scopatone oblivious to the enemy, which just ran by on the catwalk by him. Let's see if that costs him in the end. Finally, Scopatone spins around and makes good. Takes down Gore. He just killed a teammate. Unfortunately for Scopatone, though, Gore is a teammate, Lee. And round three comes to a close. And the Rednecks, as the Seals take round three, we're seeing a changing of the guard here in the arena. So jumping is useless as having a few problems getting on track today. As for the second game in a row, they lose to Team Rednecks, although this time, they actually did it to themselves with a team kill late in the last round. You know, you think that they'd have the advantage having played SOCOM 2 on the show last time, but the newcomers proved that skill is often more important than experience. Now we're gonna check in with Flo, who's standing by once again with Gazebo from Team Redneck. You're hot, you're on fire today. I can't even believe it, but you guys were kinda neck and neck for a little bit there. What do you think pushed you over the edge? Well, we noticed in the first few rounds that they kept on pushing their way up, so we switched to heavy weapons, uh, started just spraying the rafters, and they kept on walking into it. You're going into Unreal next. You have the same strategy there, or? Something completely different. We're just going to we're gonna do, do mainly offense and uh, see how they do. If they start pushing us hard, we'll move back to defense. Oh, well, he's got a plan, and I also think there's a beautiful thing happening here between <laughs> us. Don't you, Mr. Testosterone? I think I'm going to be sick. Now, things are not looking good for our defending champions. As they're down two points tonight, heading into that final game. But the MVP points and the cumulative score are still up for grabs. So along with the two points for our PC game, it's still anyone's show. And while our teams prepare for the final showdown in Unreal Tournament 2004, you can head to our website at g4tv.com slash arena. We can catch a glimpse of the Hall of Champions and sign up to get your team on our show. Our final game is coming up right here on Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Now, before the break, Team Rednecks proved that their win in the console game wasn't a fluke, as they outlasted Jumping is Useless in SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs. But hey, Jumping is Useless is not ready to give up yet, and there's plenty of points still to be had. Our final game, Unreal Tournament 2004, will determine who stays alive 
in the hunt for destination vacation. Let's go to Kevin, who's hanging out in the PC ring to get things started. Kevin. All right, thank you, Lee. Yes, our third and final game today is Unreal Tournament 2004, the newest title in the popular first-person shooter franchise. But this isn't just a rehash of last year's version, as players will find unique weapons, distinctive maps, and a brand new element, vehicles. The mode is capture the flag, where the objective is to grab your opponent's flag and bring it back to your own base, which scores a single point. Now, the team that scores the most points in three five-minute rounds is the winner. Today's map is Grassy Knoll, which features identical strongholds separated by a dense forest. Now, the environment is small, so we can expect plenty of intense close quarters combat. Now, let's get to the action and see who will score the PC points in Unreal Tournament 2004. One. And round one is underway, Kevin. Unreal Tournament 2004, the red team. Jumping is useless versus the blue team. Rednecks, we have our flag. And Pirate takes the blue flag. Jumping is useless. Off to an early attack. The blue flag is in their possession. I'm dead. And sure enough, he goes down, drops the flag, and Gazebo returns it for his team. Master Shakedown launching some secondary flag fire at Autrix as he picks up the flag and mows him down. And Master Shake has a clear shot. Scope, you got anything on Master Shake? Got it. And he is outside of the red base. And Scopatone drops Master Shake and defends the flag for his team. Excellent D. I got the flag. And now it's Gore in possession of the blue flag for jumping is useless. Bunny hopping his way across the landscape and he takes down Master Shake. Get away from me. You not know for Team Rednecks, flag in hand. Scopatone, you got him? There's Scopatone who gets a beat on him wow. with a well-placed rocket shot. Excellent leading by Scopatone. Good job. And Gore queues up two rockets and takes down Gazebo. And Gore double jumps his way out to the pasture, but there's... Master Shake, minigun in hand, brings him down and returns the flag. We are in overtime, zero to zero. Sudden death, first flag capture wins the round. All right, I've got the flag, but they've got the flag. We need to get it back. Gore in possession of Team Redneck's flag. He's on the offensive, but it looks like Team Redneck's is also in possession of the other team's flag. Gazebo with the red flag, Gore with the blue flag. It's gonna come down to this, Kevin. Gazebo bunny hopping away, retreating backwards so that he can keep an eye on his enemy. Ah, and he takes down Pirate with the flat cannon. Gore with the blue flag, Gazebo with the red flag. Oh, and Gore is in serious trouble, Lee. He's dodging and some he fire and down. he gets taken down by Anano. I dropped the flag. Gazebo has a chance, and there it is. Gazebo places the blue flag, Gazebo to take round one in a hard fought overtime. Woo! Jesus. Take it there, fella. Dang, they better than I thought. Two. And round two underway. And jumping is useless, the red team versus the rednecks in blue. And Gazebo off to an early start, wasting no time picking up the enemy's flag. Make sure we get the flag back. As Gazebo drops down in a rocket fight, takes down Scopatone. Well, a flag capture in this round could be all she wrote, Kevin, for jumping is useless. Gazebo, red flag in hand, minigun in hand, making his way across the landscape, and he takes a lightning gun to the chin, and that sends him down. Excellent use of the translocator by Pirate, making his way in through that window there, and he grabs the flag. Pirate with the blue flag. And he's outside already, rocket launcher in hand, and he spins around quickly and starts making his way back towards the base. He's got Master Shake in tow, though, switching to lightning gun, but takes one behind. Good, guys. Master Shake will see you in the parking lot. And Gazebo grabs the red flag. Someone's coming. Keep going, keep going. Scopatone unloading on Gazebo with that minigun. He's got to he's got to shake off the Master Shake, though. Ooh. And he's unable to, and he goes down, and that means Gazebo has a chance here. Come on, Curry. Gazebo looking to plant that flag, and yes, he does. But now Pirate has the flag in hand. Let's see if he's able to make it out of there in time and even this up and send this baby into overtime. Help me out, help me out. He's dodging some flak fire, but he won't be able to dodge for long. Everybody from Rednecks, all eyes on Pirate as he makes his way back. I don't see a teammate in sight. Where is jumping is useless? And there he goes. Like a Pereira family reunion, this one's all Rednecks. After two close rounds to Rednecks. Move on. Unreturned with 2004 victorious. Technically, when you're playing video games, jumping is useless. So I basically flunked English for no oh, reason at all. So jumping is useless finally gave Team Redneck some competition in the form of UT 2004, but they came up a bit short, and apparently they're just dead on, because even with some hardcore bunny hopping, they still couldn't cap a single flag. And with victories in all three of today's games and the point for total score, it's a foregone conclusion that we've got a new champion in the form of Team Rednecks, who will also win copies of SOCOM 2, a Retrocon controller, and a Nyko Airflow mouse. And with his steady performance in all three of today's games, our MVP is none other than Gazebo. Let's go to Flo, who's standing by with our new champion. Gazebo! You seem like a bit of a flag hog. 
What was that about? And do you think your teammates are going to be a little pissed at you for that? I think that as long as we got the win, the whole team acted together. I mean, I couldn't have got the flag caps without Nano sniping in the middle throughout the whole right. game. Master Shake and uh, I'm freaking bad. They just held the flag and didn't let him touch it hardly at all. Right. And without those, without the, them on my team, I couldn't have got any flag caps. So you're saying it's all about teamwork. That's what it is. And you're going to bring that to the next show? Yeah, if it's if it's works, if it works, why change it? I agree. If it works, why change it? Get me, you fool. No. Ooh. Ah, Lee, are you jealous? No way, honey. He's not my type. So jumping is useless goes from the champs to the chumps as they couldn't make a single title defense and lost the crown to Team Rednecks. And that means at the start of the next competition, it'll be the Rednecks as they wrap up one victory. They'll go for number two. Next time, they'll try to move one step closer to the Hall of Champions, where they just might have the chance to compete for the fun of the sun of Destination Vacation. We'll see what happens next time against a new opponent on the next episode of Arena.